Real estate doesn't have to be so spooky on this episode of Title Tuesday. everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title, also known as your Title King. Don't forget to subscribe below. If you do not subscribe, there is a chance you may miss one of our upcoming videos. So click that red subscribe button and then select to the right the little alert button. So this way you get alerts of all of our new episodes that we issue every single Tuesday morning called Title Tuesdays. As well as joining our VIP list, you can text in, you text the word title, to 31996 and you will actually get a text message with our newest release video right to your smartphone 24 hours before they are even released to the public. So now on to today's topic. We're doing a very special Halloween episode talking about real estate doesn't have to be so scary. And one of the topics that come up a lot, we're talking about code enforcement violations. There is a difference when you're talking about code enforcement violations versus code enforcement liens are two totally different animals. First, we're gonna talk about code enforcement liens. This is typically once the violation has been in place, they go before the judge and they issue an actual violation that then turns into a lien that is accruing daily fines. These could be 100, 200, $300 a day, accruing every single day until you bring the property into compliance. Those affect the title to the property. So title cannot be transferred to the buyer unless these issues are taken care of, foreclosed out, or mitigated out, which means you go before the special magistrate and you actually ask them to say, I've taken care of these issues, please reduce the fine. And usually they will reduce it down to administrative costs because they're not looking to collect two, $300,000. They are looking just to make sure the property is in compliance and everyone is happy. So now let's go talking about code enforcement violations. These typically show up on a municipal lien search, which you know is different from a title search. The title search would show the code enforcement lien. The municipal lien search, which is not liens, is going to show any notice of violation. This means that if the code enforcement officer drives past the house and they see something, they're going to send you a notice of violation. That notice of violation, you typically have a certain amount of time that you need to make sure you bring it into compliance. You let them know they will re-inspect and close that out. So a lot of the investors and buyers ask, well, what are some of the common things that we're seeing? Well, the first thing I wanna tell you that we see a lot of times is an illegal addition. That's one of the largest, most common ones where it's either a carport that was closed into become a, garage so it was a carport where you put your and then they close it in they make it a family room how do you know if you're looking at a property if that is the case well typically when you walk into what looks like it should be a garage or it's a family room you're going to have a step down that would be your first idea that the property was done with possibly an illegal addition where they turned the carport into an actual family room or the garage into a family room So you wanna make sure when you're buying a property that it's brought into current code to make sure you're not going to have any issues when you're looking to close on the house or looking to resell the house. So that's the first one. The second one we see a lot are the patios, patios in the rear of the house that are closed in. Again, that could be the same thing. It could be some sliding glass doors that enter into this family room. It could be, again, a step down. So there could be no closet in there. So these are some of the things you wanna look at. And what you can reference is the property appraiser site to see how many square feet the property appraiser tells you the house has under air versus total square footage. And you can kind of do the math yourself and see, does the property appraiser know about this room? Are they counting it as under air square footage, which means you're paying taxes under air square footage. And it was probably done with a permit and brought up to current code. Now I want to talk about some of the uncommon ones that we see that you still have to watch out for because on a lot of the foreclosed properties, these are the items that are going to come up. So some of the common code things are high weeds, high grass for failure to cut the lawn. A lot of these foreclosed properties, abandoned properties, the grass grows high 
and the code enforcement department will come in and take care of that and then they will rebuild to the owner of the property. So you wanna make sure if you have a vacant property or if you're looking to buy a property that maybe you know you're definitely gonna close on, you see that grass getting a little high, maybe it's worth it to send someone out there to mow that lawn and make sure you get it taken care of so you do not get hit with a code enforcement uh, violation. We see a lot of abandoned cars. Abandoned cars, broke, broken down cars is another one. They wanna make sure the property and the, the community looks beautiful for buyers that are coming into the area and for the other homeowners that have spent sometimes their entire life savings to live in this community. So they're looking for broken down cars, broken glass. Sometimes they'll board up windows if they see a uh, broken glass and abandoned properties. Animal noise is a big one. Down in Miami, we see a lot of uh, nuisance violations for animals, a lot of animal issues with animal control. And again, these are some issues that your title company should, and I warn you, they should be looking for. And if they do not look for it, it could potentially come back to cause you a claim later on. And the problem is for a few hundred dollars, no one's going to open a claim. You're probably going to be stuck paying it unless you're using a title company that will stand behind their product like Independence Title does. And one of the other things we see uh, work done without a permit is again, one of the larger ones, whether it could be the illegal addition, closed in carport, but sometimes it could just be the kitchen, the roof. Uh, there are some cities that even require you to pull a permit if you put a ceiling fan in. So if code enforcement drives around and sees a new ceiling fan box and the old fan sitting on the curb for garbage, they could potentially cite you for not pulling a permit. So you wanna always make sure you go to the city's website, the building department, see what is required or call them, what's required in order to pull a permit, what type of work do you need a permit for, so this way you know what you can and you cannot do when it comes to buying a house and doing work on it. So I hope this is a very informative video. We tried to cover as much as we can talking about the difference between code liens and code violations, what some of the common code violations we've seen. If you've seen something unique, maybe a code violation we didn't talk about on this video, do me a favor and just leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it. Maybe we could produce a video around that in the future. So thanks for watching this episode of Title Tuesdays. If you enjoyed watching this episode, please share on social media. You see all of the icons here on, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. LinkedIn, please share our video to the masses because it's all about educating the community to make sure you understand the business and you know what to look out for to prevent a problem in the future. So thanks for watching this episode of Title Tuesdays. It was a little spooky, hopefully not too spooky. Happy Halloween, and we look forward to seeing you at the closing table.